Hi guys, Switch Bassini from YJBassini.com. Today I want to talk about knowing when to use Buy It Now and Best Offers in your eBay listings. Um, I don't know if you guys seen a reseller news the other uh, this morning I put out about the eBay glitch. Um, you know the uh, listings ain't you know, showing up in search. Um, I don't know if they corrected that. I didn't do a follow up on it just yet. But uh, again, I, I, the reason why I'm making this video, this is to talk about, <clears throat> you know, when to use a buy it now and best offers in your listings. And I'm going to do a screen share here, and I just want to, you know, share some stuff with you here. Um, I got a, I got, you know, when when you're using best offers, and you see your prices are like. $2.99, $3.99, $4.99. I found out that no matter how desperate you may be that you want to get rid of these items, don't put best offer. No, seriously, and, and I'm not saying this to be funny because I had somebody make an offer for, if I could find it over here, and I just declined it. It was for here, The Sims, okay? Um, I had it for two, yeah, I had it for $4.99, right this one here I'm gonna click and make it bigger I had it for $4.99 with free shipping $4.99 with free shipping best offer you know it's you notice it's not on there the person makes an offer and then a person lives in New York now you know the taxes here in here in New York ain't the cheapest so the person makes an offer for a buck 25 a buck twenty-five with free shipping. I should have just messaged the person back and said, "Hey, it's on me." Literally, you know how much it's going to cost to ship that out? A buck twenty-five with free shipping? Nada, nothing. Um, that's my fault. Okay, I don't fault the buyer. I think. I will say this, it's very cavalier that the buyer would actually accept the, or make a best offer on something like that. Now, you might say, well, you did put it for $4.99, okay, with free shipping. Yes, that's true, but never on my part. But to make an offer for a buck and a quarter with free shipping, I mean, really? What am I, what am I supposed to do? So who eats the shipping? Who takes a loss on the item? No good, folks. You know, when we do things in life, especially with a type of business like this that we're in, a lot of us resellers, we tend to, well, at least I, I can't speak for all of you guys, but for myself, we tend to get a little antsy, a little panicky, you know? Um, you know, you, you worry about making enough money to cover your bills at the end of the month, and you had these things for God knows how long sitting on eBay. I, I watched some resellers when they talk about their selling items and they, they go through the, you know, the format of what they bought it for, how much they, they're selling it for, how long it's been on eBay for, eight months, six months, over a year. They must have, like I always say, and I'm not talking like the Grim Reaper here, folks, but they must have, again, a secondary income a secondary guaranteed income coming because again you know when you're doing eBay if you're sole the sole provider of eBay and you know using this as your income as I always say folks and I, I don't sugarcoat things I tell it like it is and some people may not like the way I, I come about and say these things but I'm being upfront and honest if you don't have money backing you up you're gonna be hurt and I think that's the problem sometimes. I think we, we have great expectations with a business like this here, and we're always thinking, well, I'm gonna be that next guy. Well, don't you hear, now, the, lately I've been hearing, <clears throat> I'm not mentioning, I'm not gonna mention the followers' names, but lately I've been hearing now, some of the followers, oh, followers, some of the sellers on YouTube are coming out now telling you what they make for the week. I'm not mentioning names. I'm not gonna mention any names or anything. I'm, that's, I'm not gonna do that. But now I notice that they're talking about how much they make weekly. Not all the time. This particular reseller doesn't, you know, they say once in a while they'll do it. But they're telling you now what they made, you know, what they made for that week. Okay. Um, again, 
we already, I already had the discussion in many of the videos I did, well, some of the videos I did. I will not discuss or disclose what I bought the item for and what I'm selling it for. And I, let alone, I am not going to sit here and tell you what I made for the week. Okay? Uh, because first off, I might not have anything to sell for the week to tell you about. Okay? <laughs> I might tell you, well, Monday through Friday of, the, uh, of August the 1st, I didn't make anything. Okay, so I'm not gonna. And besides, I'm not gonna disclose that. I don't think I think that's irrelevant to know. You know, wh why do I gotta tell you how much I'm making? I have nothing to hide, but I just think it's personal. But anyway, um, off that topic, you know, again, just just recapping one thing though. Whatever sellers want to do out there, the sellers that they want to talk about that, more power to you. You go for the gusto. You want to tell the whole world what you're making. That's good. Not me. Anyway, the topic I have here, like I said, is knowing what to use best offers and buy it now in your listings. I put this up for four ninety nine. This listing here with free shipping. As you can see, it's changed. Okay, that's my fault. And why is it my fault? Because I've had the things sitting around for months, and I want to get rid of them. So you know, without thinking. You know, we'll let, we let. You know, sometimes you let your your fears overcome your, you know, your, your 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 I guess your authoritative judgment. You know, it's not you're not balancing it out right, and you know you do the you make a mistake like that. And two things I could have done, I could have said, well, to keep face, I could say, well, okay, I'll accept it, take the loss, and that's it. It's my fault. But I declined the offer. Okay, I can't afford. That thing, I didn't get it. See, these things I don't get for nothing. Okay, no matter what you do, and, and I think we talked about this one before. The thrift stores are getting hepped up to this, you know. Like they're wise to this. So they've been wise for it for a while. Okay, they're looking these things up on eBay. They're doing their research, and they know what they're putting them out there for. Okay, and let me tell you something. Just for those who are curious, you know, in regards to thrifting, I think I did something at sourcing once before about this. When, he, when, when these thrift stores and people can contest it if they want with me or not, this is my personal opinion, okay? This is how I feel, and I'm going to tell you how I come about the way I feel with this in, in regards to how they do their pricing, is because I've seen the same items but what the thrift stores are selling for on eBay. It is totally impossible to make money off of okay they are selling the items what, the, what what you see on eBay that's what they're selling the items for in the first stores now at least the ones in my area okay I'm in New York I'm on the East Coast here in New York okay I know people say well it's expensive to live in New York and the stores got to pay for their overheads and they got to pay and I understand all that but my thing is these thrift stores folks are getting these things for free okay you might say a nonprofit, they write or whatever, but they're getting the items for free, this merchandise for free, and they're charging exuberant prices. Okay? You have to be very lucky to get an item so dirt cheap that you could flip it for a nice profit. You have to be really lucky. I, and I know there's probably resellers out there that are doing it. They'll tell you, at least that's what they tell you. You know, we don't. I don't know these people personally. I only know them on YouTube, just like you know me. You say, "You, I don't know this guy personally." Maybe I'm making these things. Up. I'm not. I'm not making them up. If I keep talking about these every now and then, it comes up. It's because I'm experiencing this stuff as I as I go along. Okay. Now, in regards to getting back to the thrifting and how they justify their prices, they get their, They have a target price, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. They have a target price. Uh, it's just like this mouse here. This this wireless Microsoft uh, the, yeah this HP mouse. If their target price for this here is ten dollars, they're gonna up it on the day on half day sales fifty percent off days. They're gonna up this to twenty. Okay, and you're gonna come on and say, ooh, I can get this for ten bucks. But that's but that's what they always wanted anyway. It's a win win for them. And people say I I have to disagree. You can. You can disagree with me all you want. 
That's how I feel. And the reason why I say that, how I come up with that conclusion, is because when you look this price up, this item up in the store on eBay, in the thrift store, mind you, that's what it's selling for. Is that a coincidence? I'm buying this here. I'm going to a thrift store on half days, <clears throat> half price off, 50% off, and it's listed for 20, and I'm getting it for 10. And then when I look it up on my radio, on my uh, smartphone, the eBay, it's it's selling for 10 bucks on eBay. Wow, isn't that a coincidence? And you're wondering why I come up with that 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 notion like that. Now people may say, well, maybe that's just coincidental. Listen. I do 99.9% .9 of my of my sourcing through thrift stores, the two particular ones, owned by the same company, the same owners. Okay, they're all over the place in New York area, Jersey, whatever. They're all over the place. Not I'm not saying state, you know, global, but they're all over the place. Okay, and I had a a, a follow on YouTube tell me that pretty much coincided with what I said that yes, they do have people in there that do look this stuff up. That's how they come up with these prices. So, this item here, you know, is bought at a thrift store. I didn't pay a quarter for it. I didn't pay 15 cents for a dollar. It was kind of good because, again, they're, they're looking it up. And, you know, you get, you get it on discounted days, I think, I think on here. Today is Mondays, I think Thursdays, I have four times. I'm not saying you can't make money. Look, people say, if I look at your soul business, I'll see that you sell stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I sell stuff. I'm not making a profit that I should be making. How can I? The thrift store to do my program. I can't make, I can't charge the decent price, make a decent price So, I guess out of desperation, you know, trying to you know, generate sales, uh, I went to all my listeners and I did best work. And I don't fault the buyers. I don't fault the buyers. It's my fault. My friend says, hey, I want somebody to buy and buy and work for shipping. He's got best work. Yeah, I want to fuck the bill. He's been into shipping. You know what's good? He's not going to fault you. This was not a good move on my part. Okay? It's, it wasn't a good move on my part. And I'm not afraid to admit it. And I'm not afraid to say I was wrong. Okay? But it happened. Okay? Um, no big thing. You don't get penalized from eBay. If you decline the offer, that's your business. You decline it. You don't have to. eBay's not going to hold strikes against you. So, oh, he declined 10 offers, 20 offers. Okay? The thing is, in this business, you learn from your mistakes. You don't dwell on them, and you move on. Okay. You don't. You don't. You don't dwell on your mistakes. You learn from them. Being in this business now full time, a year and two months now. Now it's a year and two months. You're going to learn. I'll leave, not you. I, I'm going to learn as I go along that 
uh, I'm gonna hit a bunch of pit holes, you know, pitfalls in the road, you know, bumps. And I have to learn to circumvent the problem the best I can and, you know, analyze it and use good, and, and just, and use, you know, I have to justify as to what I'm selling for, how much, and is it gonna be, you know, if, is the item I'm selling gonna be better off with best offer or buy it now? Okay, now I do have best offers on the higher price things, but I work with a margin, okay? I mean, if I'm selling something for $50 or 70 or 90 or $100, whatever, I'll work with a little, there's a margin, I have a little leeway there to play around with. But if I'm selling something for $10 or $20 and you're gonna say, give me, I'll sell it, you know, I'll make an offer of two, three dollars, forget about it, it's a waste of time. Now, I'm not faulting the buyer. Hey, why not? I would have, you know something? I would have probably done the same thing. But then again, if you're a person that's, you know, got some kind of a conscience and stuff, you say, you know what? Maybe the person made an error. I mean, the guy's selling something for $2.99. I got over here, I'm looking at the article over here, one of the things here, $2.99. They really want to make a best offer for a buck or something? I mean, geez, the guy's cheap enough. And then let alone if I had free shipping on it, you know? But it's my fault. It's my fault, folks. So I don't fault the buyer, okay? I don't I don't fault the buyer one bit. But again, you know, in regards to this video, you gotta know, well, at least me, I keep saying you, me and me, you're not the one that made the error, I am. Um, you gotta know when to make the right, you know, implement the right information uh, within, your, within your listings. And I found out that with certain items, higher priced items, best offer does help in some cases. In some cases, it don't. Even on the higher priced items, I've gotten ridiculous offers. And, uh, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to, you don't have to respond to them. You, you know, you're responsible, you could decline the offer though, I'm just saying. I mean, when a person said, I'll give me a buck and a quarter for it, now it's free shipping, I just, I didn't bother messing, I just declined it, I didn't bother. So my thing is, if you're starting out, if you're a newbie in this like me, or I'm a year and two months now into it, um, just be aware of the how much it costs. You know, you're getting the item for at the thrift stores. Remember, do your research. Um, again, I've like I said again, I've been to thrift store. The store, thrift stores. I people say, why don't you go source for somewhere? You know, go sourcing elsewhere. If they like that, go to uh, the Goodwill or go to Salvation Army. I like them because they're convenient. So people say, well, then if you don't want to make the move, then don't stop complaining about it. <laughs> then uh, just suck up to it and that's it. You know, learn to, to take it take it for what it's worth. I guess so. I'm not going to drive around to different localities miles and miles away just to get something for $5 and then I burnt maybe, I, mean, I burnt a few bucks and get, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't, I like to stay in my local, you know, my my surroundings here. I know, I know where everything is. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not contradicting myself and saying, I don't always get good deals there at the first stores. There have been occasions, and but it, because, it could be because two things. One, the people were in a hurry to tag it or price it up and get it out on the floor because I've seen that happen. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why I'm, I, I could say that I did make the, some, some killings off in there uh, at the first stores because of probably Poor planning, poor management on their part with the workers. Um, I've seen items like, for example, I sell eyeglass cases, right? Nine West cases. And again, I don't disclose prices, but there's two thrift stores in my area that I deal with. And you got we have a Westbury location and a Levittown location. The Westbury location will sell the item dirt, pretty dirt cheap, okay, really cheap. You go, now these are owned by the same owners now. You go to the other one in Levittown, they might have that same item for a lot more money, okay? Quite a bit more money. So you're saying, well, so now it sounds like a contradiction. So I'm not, I'm just trying to bring a point out. It all depends who you have working that day. 
Depends how fast they're sorting stuff out. Now, I bumped into a couple resellers that I frequent, I see frequently at these thrift stores. And I got talking to one of them. And one guy was saying to me, well, you know, if you look back there, you don't see the people on the computers. You know, so they're not, I mean, the back where they have the stuff you can look back there, I mean, you can't look back there, of course, but they have trucks pulling in. When I pull in the parking lot because I pull around a building, they have trucks pulling in there, dropping stuff off, and the guys are taking the stuff, sorting it, putting it out there, clothes, you name it, it's there. Furniture, dresses, TVs, big TV, you name it, it's there. Everything and anything is there. So when my friend said, well, you don't see people back there, they're not, they're not looking, no. You only see the people sorting and pricing out, but you don't know, you know, prior to that, what was done, okay? They might have all that stuff like an assembly line and they have over, you know, of course you're not gonna see, you're not, they're not gonna sit there, if they got 20 people back there, not got 20 computers back there, no, of course you don't see it there. They do have the, uh, where they tag them, okay? They do have it where they do tag up the prices, you know, they put the prices on. And yeah, it's, it sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm not. It's because it's the way it was done that day. They might have been in a rush. Maybe the person, hey, how many times I went there and I brought stuff to them and I said, this has no tag on it. But yet it was put out there. And most likely, when you put stuff out like that, you would think it was tagged. It wasn't tagged. And here's the other funny thing about that. When you do find something good at a thrift store, and it's not tagged, and you see it laying there, it's because the other resellers, as far as I'm concerned, so the majority of people that resell this, they didn't want to take the initiative to go there to ask the person, can you put a price on this? Because they're told, from well, what I was understand, from other resellers that when they see something that doesn't have a price on it, they put it there and it goes out later on that day or the next day. But me, because I've been going there doing business with them now for over a year, they got to know me, and I tell them, I say, excuse me, you know, could you get a price on this here? Some people say, no, 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 we can't price it now. It'll come out later on or at the end of the day or tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. I've had that happen because I come back tomorrow. What am I going to do? I got to wait by the, I got to wait by the door there as soon as it opens and run whatever it is to get it. I mean, you know, I, I don't, I can't work that way. You know, I mean, I could, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to go to that extreme. Um, so what they do is, uh, in some cases, they'll, if I take it up there, and I said, can you put a price on it? Because they know me, you're familiar with me. They'll price it up and then I get it. Now, you might say, now when I get it, I've had this happen too. When I get it, after it's priced, first thing I do is look it up on the eBay and see what it sells for. If if that thing is in a good, if it's, I feel like I can profit off it, yeah, then I'll buy it. But if it's almost the same price, if it's, well, it's not almost the same price, if it is the same price as what's selling on eBay, I put it back, let somebody else buy it. So you might say, well, you did a good deed. You got a price for somebody else to buy. <laughs> you know, that's how I look at it. I'm not going to, look, I know it sounds like, you know, what I'm saying is contradicting, but I love the thrift stores. But it's not like back in the day when you go to a thrift store before, like I said, before the eBay, all that stuff came out, eBay, Amazon, all that stuff came out. You could go into a thrift store and you could buy stuff for good prices. And why? Because nobody was in the back room looking up what the thing sells for on, on eBay. I mean, it's a thrift store. They're making millions. That thrift store, those thrift stores I deal with, are making millions of dollars a year. I mean, it's a gold mine. Even when a couple of people said, said this, this place, it's very big. They're big places, the ones I deal with. It's a gold mine. They're making money hand over fist. And that's just two locations. They got them all over in, but they can Brooklyn, Jersey, and elsewhere. Same owners. They're making money hand over fist. Okay, now people say, yeah, but it's a non-profit. <laughs> Listen, they're making money, believe me, okay? They're making money. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about the owners. Good for them. I'm happy they're making money. I'm talking about me right now, RJ Bassini, that's got to make money. Um, <clears throat> again, if you're going to do sourcing or, or you know, if you're going to do pricing, you know, your listings, uh, I'm not... I'm sure a lot of you guys know, but I'm talking about the, I'm not talking about the seasoned sellers. I'm talking about the, the people that come in, the newbies. Um, hopefully, you'll get your stuff at a good price. If you do go to thrift stores, 
yard sales, garage sales, whatever, uh, goodwill. I hear nightmares about that as well, folks. I mean, anything, anything you, you know, I, you, you talk about, I could probably find something to counteract it. Okay, and the only reason why I'm saying about that, about the yard sales, I, I refer to this in a couple other my videos, or at least one of them. Um, uh, I won't forget the story again. A reseller <clears throat> had brought it. That's how I. That's how I know about it. That's why I'm talking about it. Uh, was telling was telling a story uh, about a yacht sale, and uh, it stuck in my mind how the person said they went there to you know pick up an item and they were going to purchase it, and uh, the person said, "Well, how much are you asking for this?" Brought it to the woman, and the woman said, "I'll be right back." Went in the house. Came back out and said to the person, the, the guy wanted to buy it. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this, this this is selling for on eBay for X amount of money. He just said, okay, thank you, left it, and she put it back, and he walked away. It's getting to that point. I don't know. I'm not saying all yacht sellers are doing this here, but everybody, you know, has got their hand in the kitty. You know, everybody wants that that extra cash, and I understand. Who don't want money? You know, what I'm saying who don't want cash. You know, that's why we that's why us resellers do what we do you know in this business building a brand and a reputation is pretty you know it's it's it's, it's pretty hard at, at first I mean look again you know I should have had a lot more over a thousand a thousand you know 15 16 17 or whatever uh, you know total feedback but again uh, you know the the buyers who buy for me uh, they don't leave feedbacks they, they come in drifts and drafts Okay. They come in drifts and drifts, the, the uh, feedbacks. But anyway, the other thing I also want to discuss too, which I think is hurting my business or hurting this business, is I, I think my listings are corrupting my sales. And people may say, well, you yeah, have descriptions. And you probably wonder, what do you mean corrupting them? First off, I have, I'm not really crazy about it. I'm going to be doing a new template over. When you click on this here, I took off best office okay I took best office off now when you scroll down look what it says best office welcome what would you think coming to a, a listing like this and you know you're saying you got this here or and you got you got then you got best office welcome and there's no there's no best office here no make an offer uh, box here so you know that's probably what's hurt me too but I'm gonna redo this this template here um, I don't really care for it some I have shop RJ Piscini for great deals on eBay I believe that I want to keep but I want to get rid of this here I don't know if it's too much text in here too much wording that's hurting it I mean I got my video down there which I would like to keep but something is turning the people off and I don't know, some people may say, well, the items you're charging too much for, and the shipping is too too much. Now, this is flat ship. This is what's being charged as far as shipping for this item. Okay, This item did have best offer on it. I took off. I took it off. Because when are you going to ask me for a dollar for this thing? I mean, it's a nice little thing. I mean, I, I put on the prices I, fair, I you know, that I feel are fair. And again, that's what I'm trying to say with this video. you got to know when to use best offer or you or when to use buy it now auctions eh, I'd be going through a burn rate as far as my <laughs> listing fees I don't know how to work I don't know what works with the auctions but if you do a 10-day listing <clears throat> I like let's say I had 10-day list on all of these here and nothing sold and then I have to relist again that could that could add up to a substantial amount of money as far as listing fees if you're not selling anything you know, I tried auction listings on certain things, and very rarely have I gotten any good deals with that. You know, gotten any good uh, good luck with it. You know, but again, I, I got to do is like I said, I, I went through a whole bunch of these listings, and I took off some. Now some that some still do have best offers on the higher price times have best offers. I mean, yeah, it's right there. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't. See, you can see it over here. Best offers: $19.99, $19.99, $29. And the thing is, folks, with this here, if you look at the <clears throat> the views and watches, okay, but you look at the views and you say, like this one here, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, 
I got the 299. This had this was with a best offer. Okay, I took it off. 28 people looked at it. This is the one that had that offered me a buck and a quarter. 23 people looked at it. Buy it now. I put it. It had best offer to it. Buy it now. With shipping, you got to pay the shipping. Now, some people may say, well, you could also pad the shipping in there too. That's true. You could. That's another good way of doing it. You know? Now, I'm not knocking that that method of selling because I know for a lot of people it probably works good. But when I look at some of the, like, how many people visited, uh, here's an example for this one here, Ray-Ban black sunglass case, right? I got a best of 7 dollars 108 people looked at it. No takers. They're paying shipping on it, but I still had the best offer there. So, you know, somebody could still get a good deal on it. It, de it depends what you're going to make an offer, okay? But a lot of these here, for those who do follow me on this here, you'll notice I hardly, I hardly had any buy it now. Okay. I, hardly, I hardly had any buy it now and uh, today I did change a lot of them that person the person wanted that Sims night probably seen that they declined it probably said wow this guy's firm he wants to buy it and he's got to buy it now price of $4.99 and he's charging shipping sorry I can't I can't do it you know these guitars um, I always keep them at that price range I don't I really don't have too much negotiating on negotiation on as far as making an offer uh, they got to pay for the item itself and the shipping. And I sold quite a few of these guitars, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, these shoes here, I had it for $19 with the best offer. I took it off. Some guy offered me 5 bucks for them. They're brand new. Okay. So you got to know when to use best offer and buy it now prices. Um, I, I didn't put these on auction because I don't think they're going to go that high. But they are brand new. But again, 220 people looked at it. Uh, 220 people only three people are watching it you know we can't let desperality get to us you know we can't be that desperate we say my god i gotta i gotta get away down here i got this here for 39 with okay i got two watches on it for best offer we'll see what the person that 47 people looked at it if the guy who offers me a decent price a couple few bucks cheaper i might offer just to get it out of here okay even with brand new things now here i'll give you an example i'll show you what a guy and fair person i am here I have a pre-owned brother, right? Tested, it works. $18.99 with best offer. You scroll a little down, I got a brand spanking new one for $19.99. Buy it now. Brand new, it's in a package, never taken out. Now, I had it, I think, for $29.99, but I dropped it down. I want to see if I can get rid of this stuff. 127 people looked at it. Here is a, an Epson Stylus printer. This printer was a working printer at one time. My be a beautiful buyer sent it back with no packet, practically no packaging, and came back and got damaged. So I go all out of my way, not to complain, to you know hash on, uh, rant on something else, but I go out of my way to make sure these things are packaged, well packaged, to get to the buyer in one piece, not in pieces. It gets there in one piece and they send it back to me and you know broken so that's why that's there 301 people looked at it and i got up 1899 it was 99 i dropped it down a buck with with best offer and depending what i get on it i'm not gonna even probably break even with it what can i tell you you know things happen i'm not i'm not saying people say well you know things happen you can't blame the buyer the mailman dropped, hey, that's what I'm with the ceramic lamp. Yeah, the ceramic lamp. Where is it? Where is this thing here? There's the brass. I'll tell you a story about that one in a second. Yeah, this one here. This lamp was a beautiful lamp. I did a video on it. it had a nice base to it like this at the top here. It had on the bottom right here. Boy, I got it. Not the buyer's fault. Boy, I got it. It was the the mail. The, I had this thing packed. It was wrapped around with styrofoam. I keep. I told. I think I told the story once before. They had to drop that thing from a very high place to break it. That's all I can tell you, because I had everything encased in styrofoam. And I'm not talking wrapping. I'm talking styrofoam to protect this thing. It, whatever. That's the aftermath. Still nice though. 
You can still see it's nice condition. Okay. You can still see it's a nice condition. That side, the bottom missing. Okay. It's got a chip. Yeah, that that too it has a chip. That's right behind the pen mark they show you. But again, if you're a person that doesn't let you know, let's superficial. I'm not saying it's superficial, but let things like that bother you. You could turn that towards the wall, and uh, you won't see it in the front. That's what are you gonna do? You know, this was a nice unit at one time. You know, had the nice ceramic base. The buyer was so happy to get it; they couldn't wait to get it. <laughs> they got it all right, in pieces. Okay, not the buyer's fault. That's the United States Postal Service, folks. Poor, poor delivery on their part. Okay, but again, it is what it is. Um, I had to put this one up. Like I said, I, I put this one up for sale because, like I said, uh, it's still usable. It works. The bulbs work. There's nothing damaged. Thank God nothing else got damaged as far as, like, the glass breaking. Over here, just to share this one with you. This, folks, was best offer. Still have best offer on it. person makes a best offer. I accept it. Message the person here two or three times. Do you want this item? I didn't say it like this, but I said, do you want this item? Basically, do you want this item? Do you want this item? If not, I would like to relist it. The person did not respond. I open an unpaid, an unpaid item case against the person, against the buyer. Sorry. You know, I, I, listen, I depend on these sales. Okay. And the bad thing about that, folks, is when you get these, these people, unpaid uh, buyers that do this, this is another thing eBay's got to, change up they got to make it when a person buys it they should have it on best offers when a person makes you know best offer or buy it now they pay immediately this is getting to be a problem this uh, this the uh, second or third person i had to file an unpaid uh, claim against against the buyer to the second or third time it's a nuisance okay now i have something coming back uh from a buyer i got a return Buyer claims it's a Sony headset. And I had it here. I tested it out. Worked beautiful. Fine. Person saying they're getting a buzzing sound in it. When I had it here, I never had a buzzing sound. I just want to share this though in regards to returns. I don't know. I think sometimes buyers feel funny returning and I say, well, it's not is that what I expected, or they don't use like these things. Not what they expected, or um, I'm not really happy with. They 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 come up with these excuses, and, and the reason why I'm talking about the excuses because I've already had this happen, where a buyer returned the printer, said the printer does not work. I when it came here to the residence, I unboxed it. Thank God this buyer was nice enough to package it up nice. I unboxed it, looked it over, gave it a clean bill of health, so to speak, tested it out, worked beautiful. Why does a buyer, in my opinion, and this is my personal opinion, make has to make an excuse up? It doesn't work. Uh, it's not as expected, whatever. You don't have to make an excuse up. That's why I put there, look. 30 day delivery, 30 day money back payment, replacement. Buyer, retain, buyer pays return shipping. Although that's another joke. We won't go there. Okay. On that broken lamp that was broken because the US Postal Service broke and I had to pay return shipping. The buyer got full refund, shipping and hand, you know, they got the shipping and the price of the item. I had to pay, I had to lay out the additional shipping. So I I went to the toilet on that ceramic one. Okay. I, I paid up on it. That, that's okay. It, you know what? It is what it is. There's nothing we could do about it. I could sit here and talk and rant about it. I ain't gonna do a blessed thing. It is what it is. That's it. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's the thing. You know, that's the thing, getting back with the buyers. You don't have to make excuses. Now, this person's gonna send this thing back to me. And uh, they messaged me this morning saying that um, I should receive it tomorrow. They gave me a tracking number. I will pick it up in my P.O. box and i will test it out and i will prove that buyer is wrong now i'm not going to message the buyer if i test it out because i know it worked because i tested it here and i didn't hear any buzzing sound now the only thing is it's wireless 
that person may have had it near something that generates a lot of electricity, a lot of uh, frequency, whatever, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it, static or something. I, I have tons of wires behind this desk. I mean, with the computers there and the printers and everything. If you look back there, it looks like electrical. It looks like a, a utility company back there. I've got so much wires in there with the extension cords and telephone lines and all that junk. Okay. Uh, I walked outside with it. Literally. Literally walked outside with it. Walked around the house, the front of the house, and I could listen to music. I noticed, I noticed that. No static whatsoever. Now, you might say, well, you complain. But here's the thing. Here's my here's my assumption is to it at the end. I know what they say about assuming. You know what it is, and I'm sure you've had this experience as a buyer. We look. I'll be honest with you. If I bought something from a seller, and the the person's charging an extra ten fifteen dollars more, you could bet you you could bet you. Dial a line. I'm going to send it back to you, saying you know it's not for me. You know, or I, I, whatever. I guess they feel funny saying I seen it elsewhere cheaper. Now I went when I went, bought stuff from Walmart, whatever it may be, an electronic thing or whatever. I would go into Walmart, tell them, oh, "What are you returning for?" And I tell them up front, "I seen a lot cheaper," or I could buy this thing off of eBay a lot cheaper. Yeah, I understand. I understand. That's it. They don't quarrel over it, but I, that's I come right out and tell it like <laughs> I tell it like it is. I tell them, well, I'll tell them, well, I seen it cheaper at another store. I seen it. I seen the same one that you guys are selling at, at Best Buy for like that ten dollars cheaper. I tell them, I'm not gonna lie to them. I'm not gonna sit to say, geez, you know, um, oh, I, I bought this item from you guys, but I, you know, I didn't do my due diligence and shop around. I just you were the first ones I thought of, and I went there and I let me buy. I figured let me just pick it up because it's very convenient. It's right down the block for me, and you know, so on and so forth. I tell it like it is. Now, if I did my due, due, due diligence and did the research on it. I could have gotten it cheap and saved myself the aggravation to go Walmart at nine o'clock in the morning and stand behind a line that uh, you know is like maybe 15, 20 people ahead of you at times, and uh, I could avoid all that hassle. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's not you know sometimes we look at situations we can't always justify that it's somebody else's wrongdoing. Sometimes it's us that make the mistakes. And, you know, like I said again, you know, look, I don't know the person's excuse as to why they didn't want to buy this here. I don't know. I sent three emails to the person. Nobody, you know, the emails messaged them three times. I don't know why they didn't get back to me. Maybe their account is closed. Maybe they wanted a trip. I had one buyer, you know, one, one buyer say to me, sorry, I didn't get back to you soon enough. Um, I was on vacation. I forgot all about it. I said, no problem. It was like, it was like a week later or whatever. Okay, these things happen. Another person had a, had emergency. Pro, you know, when another person said, "I'm sorry, I got in a car accident, I ended up in a hospital." You know, I'm not going to sit there and you know, <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and validate what they're saying. If that's what you're telling me, that's what happened. You don't have to. You don't have to explain that. You could just say, you could just come out and say, "I totally forgot about you." You have to tell me your personal stories, like you know, I had, I have a loved one that's sick, or I was visiting somebody in a hospital, I went away. You know, you don't have to go to that extreme. Look. I understand we all have problems in, in life, you know. So I'm not. I don't expect per, a, pe a person to come up and tell me verbatim what happened in their life, you know. But you know, it is what it is. So that's the story with this lamp. That's why this is back on. But here's the thing. Here's the, the problem with that. When a buyer does, when you have to open an un, un, you know unpaid buyer situation, you know, uh, case. There were people watching this, and you kind of like. By a person doing this, you kind of like scared off the other buyers, potential buyers, because you know your indecisiveness. You didn't realize, you know, what what you know. Do I do I want this or don't want it? You know, maybe you want maybe you wanted to buy it. You know, be one of these people. Let me buy it now. You know, put a bid on it. This way, I'll have it. And in the meantime, I can go shop around for somebody else. You know, see who else has it because maybe it was getting time to where it's going to end. I don't know. All I know is, it's, I had to relist it. I know eBay is going to refund me for that because I opened an unpaid thing, but, uh, but suppose they did. That's another 30 cents that I have to keep shelling out because buyers sometimes are undecisive and they're thinking, well, oh, I don't know, do I, do I really want that? 
I had a buyer one time say, I think on a couple occasions, they purchased something that they can't sell. I need to cancel this here. Okay, no problem. Refund. Bing. You're done. I don't, it happens. I've done it. I bought cartridges, ink cartridges for my print, and I've seen them a lot cheaper. I messaged a, I messaged a seller. I said, I can't, I'm, I want to cancel out this order. I didn't give him a reason. I don't, I don't remember giving a reason. I just I said, I need to cancel the order out. No problem. Boom. Done. We all, we all go through that there. It, it, it's, it's a reciprocating door on, on both, you know, the, the buyer sellers, buyer sellers. It's the same thing. But I think, in my personal opinion, again, getting back with this best offers and buy it now, I think, you know, as much as we want to get this stuff listed, thank God I have thousands of listings. I mean, I would have been, I would have, I would have still been here playing around with them, trying to, some things I just left, you know, I did, a majority of them I did, I did revise them. And uh, the next thing that's going to be a lot of work is when I redo the template. Um, I'm going to make, I'm trying to make it a lot nicer. I'm going to take out that extra wording. I'm going to try to make it more readable. In other words, like, you don't look and it's not like text and text and wording, 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 you know. I don't think people want to see all that. I put, I put my ads, I put over here, okay. You say, well, nobody really needs to know that, you know, who you are, you're a general here. Like, I have a general merchandise since 1900. People don't really need to know that, okay. Um, I put over here, attention buyers, please take into consideration that when buying items on eBay, please note the U.S. Postal Service holidays is scheduled due to ensure that your items will get to you in time and in a timely manner. Thank you. I put this, I go to my way to do this here. Some people may say, well, that's good. You, when you update your list, are you going to add that stuff? To, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Buyers look at it. I don't know. You know why I do this, folks? Because near the holidays, you're going to probably get buyers buying stuff and wanted to get to their destination at a certain time, and that's why I put it up here. This is the 2017 postal holidays. Okay? January 2nd to Monday for New Year's Day. Martin Luther King, January 16th, and so on, so on and so forth. And the reason why I do that is to give the potential buyers or the buyers a heads up saying, listen, if I buy it, now for December 24th, we know about that there, but if you're gonna buy something and you want it to be there for Christmas. Do it before, do it like in, like the second week of December or the first week in December. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, if you feel that, if you feel that it's got that imperative that it's got to get there, I offer one day shipping, okay? But I'm just trying to say, if you feel that nervous that you think it's not gonna to get to that destination, then, then do it a week ahead of time. You know what I'm saying? That's why I do this here, folks. I try to make things a lot easier for, you know, in other words, just give a little insight to the potential buyer. I don't know. You look at this here. The title, I'm doing away with this here. This whole template, it looks like a cartoon character play. <laughs> I'm not I'm not too happy with it. I am and I ain't. I, I don't know. There's something, I, I don't know. There's something maybe that, I don't know if this thing's turning the buyers off. Uh, does it look like I'm begging the buyers to buy? I don't know. I mean, I got my feedback. Yes, I put a note there and highlight in yellow. Please note before leaving any negative feedbacks, I would ask you to contact me first. I think I would like to leave that in my next new template. The return policy. I mean, we'll list you a free, uh, full refund on new and pre-owned merchandise if you're not completely satisfied. Combined shipments. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But I just don't, I just would like to trip it up a little, change it around a little, you know? That's, that's what I would like to do. I like to change it around. Um, when I'm saying cartoonish, it's got the colors in there. You know, all green, and you get the red, and you got the purple and black. And, you know, I don't know. It, it, I don't know. Uh, but it's definitely going to be changed. Okay? It's definitely going to be changed. In videos, um, whenever possible, folks, I will put videos in my embed videos in my listings. That's a given. You know, regardless, people say, well, you know, kind of like swaying away from the best best office and buy it now. Um, in, in videos, I will embed in there. It's, a, it's, it's work. I'm not going to deny it. It takes time to do it, just like it takes time to create these things, too. Because after I do this video, then I got to go into the video editing software and do my copy and pasting. And if I'm going to put music in there or subtitles and whatever, and so on and so forth, it takes time. Okay, these, these videos take time to do. Some people could do them on a fly. 
Some people take their cell phones and shoot a picture, bing, and they pop it right on there. You know, they don't maybe go through the little things I do, like I add the music in there, I might add subtitles, whatever. Some people do, some people don't. Do I, does it make my videos that much more appealing to watch? No, it doesn't make it more appealing to watch. But you know, it is what it is. But anyway, I'm not gonna go on anymore with this. All I'm saying again, folks, is for the newbies that are, you know, um, getting into this line of work, uh, you know, all I can say is in regards to this, when it comes to listing, uh, use your best offers and buy it now. Um, features in your listings, you know, just see what's justified for it. You know, what's for the items you're selling. Um, like I said, I made a mistake. Um, I do still have best offers on some of my things, on some of my listings here, and um, that was my error. I want to get this stuff. I want to move it out, and uh, I just went into the uh, action mode there, and I clicked on all those, checked all those boxes off, and I went in there, and... Uh, I just put on their best offers welcomed and all 256 well at the time maybe it was 250 whatever they all came up with the um, best offer so and again um, if you're a person like me that's gonna you know, do titles in your descriptions uh, I got to take all of those out because like I said when I do the new template uh, it, all that's got to come out again and then I got to well, copy and paste the you know, description in there hopefully it'll be that but it's gonna take some time I went through this once before with something updating and it took day almost a good day or so maybe two days a day and a half because I bring you know I mean you, you said you go store crazy as well looking at these things copy paste copy paste going back and forth and yeah, it's a lot of work it's a lot of work doing this stuff I wish all the work you put into it though it pays off by getting sales unfortunately that's not happening today very quiet if you guys didn't read the reseller, uh, you know, watch the reseller video I did this morning, uh, check it out. It's about the, um, the eBay glitch. Uh, just to just recap that there is they had a glitch, I think it happened Friday around 5 p.m. Um, people's listings weren't showing up in uh, search. And uh, check out that video. Um, you know, check it out. I, I, that's why I put it out there, folks. I put these videos out to help out. Uh, and this, you know, and, and hopefully it'll give you a little insight. Uh, this video here is to, you know, make the newbies aware, not the seasoned sellers, not the sellers that have been selling for 15, 20 years on here. Even though people say, well, you've been on it since 1999. Yeah, but I haven't been doing it full time since 1999. Uh, I wouldn't be able to afford it. Not at the rate I'm going, not the way the sales are going. I had to, I had to work. I had my job going at the time, very stressful job. I had two little girls, you know, family to support and stuff. So I didn't have time to worry about eBay. eBay was the secondary thing. It wasn't even a thought in my mind at the time. You know, when you got a family to worry about, you're not gonna sit there saying, "Oh, geez, I got a coming off from a stressful day of job. Uh, I got to go work on eBay now." No, family came first. This is the secondary thing. Back then, it was a secondary, and like I said, I did it. I was a casual seller on it. That's why if you look at my feedback, you say, geez, this guy, since 1999, you would think he'd have five or 10,000 listings. I didn't, it was an on and off thing. I didn't do it. I wasn't doing it for a living, you know? I couldn't afford to do it as a living, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you're buying a house and stuff like that. Who's gonna, <laughs> listen, if people could buy, if people could quit their day jobs and make their solely income, I'm not saying they don't, I'm not gonna get back into that rant, but if people say they, they can quit their day jobs and use eBay as a sole income source, God bless you, okay? Um, I, don't, I don't see it with, with me right now at this point. I mean, you know, I've only been doing, like I said, a year and two months, okay? Uh, I don't expect to become uh, making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, like I said in one of my other videos. You know, it is what it is. Uh, you do the, you, you know, you, you give it in life, we're gonna walk this path once. You give it a shot. You don't wanna be one of these type of people that say, I should've, could've, and would've. Anybody, anybody could say that. If it's one thing I learned from reading about the other entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, and all them there, uh, 
and the other and other and other entrepreneurs. The main thing was perseverance. You gotta persevere with this here. You gotta keep trying. Colonel Sanders, I heard he went through so many turndowns with his uh, recipe for his Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know, I forget how many it was, but he had he went through so many companies or people, he approached so many people with this recipe, recipe, no, we don't want it, no, don't want it, I kept turning it down. You would think after the guy got so many turndowns, he would have just tossed his hand and said, that's it, I'm done, I'm just, let me go back to work, let me go do what I gotta do. He didn't, he didn't do that there. He, um, he didn't do that. He pers he was pers he persevered. He was striving to get this here. It was on his, it was his, one of his I guess his ultimate goals in life was to become uh, an entrepreneur, and he hit the right person with it, and the rest is history. You know, he has long since gone. He passed on. But you know, if you read the story about Colonel Sanders, who, who started KFC, um, he went through a lot. He really did. That's what, and that's what this, that's what any business. The only thing I have to say with this here, I read it somewhere recently, in one of these, uh, well, heard from a reseller, that I don't know if they said there's 6,000 more sellers on eBay or 6 million more coming to eBay. I don't know exactly the whole, the numbers. I thought I heard that there, so don't quote me on it, but I know there are probably more and more people looking to get into the ebay business because they're not happy one with their jobs maybe they got a low salary maybe the income is low whatever they just they just want to go out and be adventurous and be an entrepreneur okay and there's nothing wrong with that i just i would hope that these people that are starting out if they're young people and they're teens and they're living home with their parents you know and it's summer recess and you know you want to try to start something and you know you you don't have to worry about bills pursue it if you are a person in the working in a working field the workforce do it as a you know seek it as a part-time venture part-time ventures can turn to full-time but it's getting there is the, that's the hardest part see quitting anybody can quit you know I could have quit this thing six months ago and say you know what I'm going back to the corporate world. What the heck? And then I could be one of those statistics that later on I could sit there saying, you know, in my late 70s, 60s, 80s, whatever, well, not 80s, but you know, later on in life. And I could say, you know, the old thing comes out, that old adage, yeah, I should have, could have, and would have. When you're that old, who's going to sit there and want to worry about a business? You were in your golden years, you know? I mean, yeah, people living in their late 70s and 80s, even 90s in some cases. But at that, at that age, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe there are all people out there in the late 80s and 90s doing eBay or they're still seeking out their uh, business ventures. Um, just to share one thing, I, I watch a lot of documentary shows and I was watching a show. Uh, it's about these people. I think it was 90 and Loving It or something like that. It was on a PBS show over here on the East Coast. We watch it on uh, Channel 13. And... <clears throat> And uh, this woman, now they interviewed so many people in their late 90s, 99, 80, 98, 97. One guy was, a, he used to run, he was still running, 97 years old, he was still running. And if you see him run, he ran, he ran pretty good. You, you know, he didn't run like a, a spring chicken outlet, but you know, like an athlete, but he, he was running, 97. Um, another person played music, but these people were all sharp as tacks. Okay. They had their faculties, they could talk to you, they could talk, they could predate things, and they were sharp, they were very sharp people. And, and the reason why they lived that longevity is because they always kept active. Okay. This one lady was 99 years old, I think she on her 100th, birth, 100th, yeah, 100th birthday. I, I know it sounds crazy what I'm about to say, but it's true. I think at the age of 100, <clears throat> she got a master's degree. Now, my father, Carissa Saul, he wasn't a comedian, but he would say, you know, not in a joking way, but he'd say, you know, a person that old that just got a degree like that, he'd say, you got you got one foot in the grave already, so to speak. But he wasn't saying it in, in a derogative way, but in other words, he probably couldn't understand why would a person at that age want to go for your master's degree. But it was something 
the person want to achieve before they left this world? And I don't know if the person's still alive or not. I don't remember when I watched that show, but it's something the person wanted to achieve. They wanted to achieve that goal. Ernest Borgnine, I was watching on Tavis Smiley. For those in the East Coast that know Tavis Smiley, he's like a you know a host commentator. He talks, he interviews people and stuff. And Ernest Borgnine, if you remember, if you know know who he is, he used to play, I think, uh, Mikhail's Navy, I believe it was. I think it was the captain, whatever. I remember the show very vividly. Uh, Tavis Smiley asked him, he was 92 years old. And uh, he said to Ernest Borgnine, he goes, how come you don't retire? You know, 92, he goes, Tavis. I'm 92 years old. What am I going to do? Sit in a rocking chair and rock myself to death? He went on later on. I mean, he did eventually pass away, but he was making movies or he was, he was involved with producing movies or directing and whatever, you know, pretty much right up to the time he passed away, which I think he died 92. I think he died like when he was on 94 or 95. He died years later. But the man kept active. You know, that's the thing. He kept active. He was a person that didn't want to just sit around. And that's how I would like to be someday. If God lets me live that long, I would like to be a person like that, always keeping active, you know? People can are living longer if they take care of themselves. But you know, with this business, and I said in a couple of videos, um, if, if, and I say if, if I ever have to do go back to the corporate world, I will always pursue eBay as my business. In other words, I'm never gonna give up on it. I get, I get, you know, frustrated at times when I see, you know, and, and all of us would do it. Please don't, people may have a different way of handling stress, but we would all get stressed out if you're depending on this as your sole income. And, you know, you're saying to yourself, well, geez, you know, what happens if I don't make another monthly, you know, if I don't make enough money to pay our bills at the end of the month? You're going to be nervous. You're going to be stressed. And if you don't have it to pay, because you don't have enough money, you're not making enough money, generating enough money from this here. What are you going to do then? Call your creditors up and say, hey, listen, I'm sorry, you don't have the money to pay this month. I didn't do good on eBay. I, I sell on eBay. I didn't, I, was make, I didn't make enough money this month. You know, it, people handle stress differently. People may look at me and say, well, every now and then you talk about things and you, you talk about these things. But I, I try to be upfront and honest. I'm not going to lie. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, and, like I always say, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. You know, sugarcoat this thing. It's a very competitive field that we're in. All of us, resellers and buyers, because the buyers are also resellers too. I'm a buyer. I'm a reseller, but I also I'm also a buyer at times. I buy, I buy like I say, I buy little things. My basically tone of cartridge and ink cartridges. That's my my thing. If you say if, I, if you see me as a frequent buyer, I buy stuff like that when I when I run out of ink. Um, but that's what I'm saying. It's a very competitive field. And it's, it's going to get harder, not to burst in with bubble, it's going to get harder as time goes on. Because everybody is jumping in on the bandwagon. And, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a chemist. You know, when I look at these things here, when I, when I click that button to use the best offers on all the merchandise I have, which is not much, it's, it's a joke what I got today. But I thought maybe it would spark a lot of interest. And, um, you know, a spark sales. Didn't do much. And let me tell you, if, if, if there is anybody, I don't, I don't care if people do the videos, but if anybody's out there thinking this along the way, like, well, maybe I'll do the videos too. Maybe I'll help. I'll, I'll tell you firsthand, you can look at my listings. I have, a, I do the sneak peek videos, demo videos, and intro videos. And, you know, I'm, I'm being upfront and honest with you. Videos, in some cases, are not going to generate sales like you think. All right, so I'm not saying, well, I got the edge. Yeah, I'm more, now I'm not competitive. I have to be competitive because, you know, I'm just telling you up front, folks. Videos, I like doing them. I like, you know, embedding them in my listings when, you know, not all 256 listings don't have it, but I feel in my heart of hearts that they do somewhat give a little more information to the potential buyer. You know what I'm saying? It makes them more aware of what they're getting from me. It shows that item in action. All right, if you're saying, well, if you're showing clothes and stuffed dolls and, and suitcases, luggage case like that. No, I'm not saying that's going to, I'm talking about electronic things. But yes, I do, I do videos like that. 
okay? I do show things like that. I do show you luggage. I do show you stuffed dolls and things I have. Yes, I do. I, I cover other videos like that. I have that. I do incorporate that in there. Especially the sneak peek videos. That's what they're all about. I show you what I picked up from the thrift stores. Oh, this is what I picked up today for the thrift store. I got this. I got A, B, and C. And I show you what I got. But I do it because, you know, I like videos. You know, I have the equipment. You know, I got, I got, I, I, I'm a Sony man. I got my Sony digital cameras. I got my dual webcams up there. Where I'm working right now off the HP webcam. You know, you spend decent money on it. Well, I was, I bought that, mind you, I bought this stuff when I was working. Now, if you told me to buy this stuff today, I don't think so. Okay. I'm not going to go out and buy a $600. Uh, digital camera, you know, uh, digital still camera. I'm not going to buy a thousand dollar video camera, which I have a video camera. Okay, I bought all that stuff. That's because that's my hobby. You know, video camera. You know, I like to do, uh, you know, digital photography. That was that's my hobby when I was working. Now I use it for the business. But I bought all that stuff when I was working. Not now. You know, I, the last thing I wanted to buy was a computer because the other one. Crap down on me, be honest with you. And I had to buy another one. I didn't buy an expensive one. I bought a one for a clearance. I bought it at Micro Center. It cost me five hundred uh well four hundred dollars. Five hundred, four hundred dollars. Now I didn't want to spend that. But I need a computer. I need a computer to work. I have a laptop, but I like this one here, the desktop, because I got a bigger screen. Laptop is small, it's got a smaller screen. I've probably done away with it, you know, you know, got away with it using, but after a while you're working like that and you're looking at a small, this is a nice size screen, about 22, 23 inch screen, you know, white screen. I could see, I could see everything better. But uh, all that stuff was purchased when I was working. Now it's a whole different ball game, folks. And that's what I'm trying to say. Anybody, again, who, you know, not to spin off into other things, segue into other things, but, you know, when you're buying stuff, buy out of necessity. If you're going to do videos like me, I don't buy the Yetis or all these expensive microphones, you know, the expensive ones like $400, $200, but I'm using a Laptec uh, stick stick my microphone, whatever. It's got the noise cancellation on, so like that, but you know what? I bought this here, what you hear me talking on right now, I got that at a thrift store for $2.50. It works. You hear me? What difference does it make if I was talking on a two dollar fifty dollar a two dollars and fifty cents microphone as opposed to a hundred dollar a hundred and something dollar yeti or whatever you could hear me right you could hear me i'm not talking gobbled people might say yeah but it comes out maybe you get a little better clear resolution it's the voice it's the monotone how we talk you could be a person that sits there and have a very growly voice it doesn't matter what if you got a five thousand dollar mic in there you know what i'm saying it doesn't matter it matters you know you get the clarity I got a decent webcam. I didn't buy no expensive webcam. You could see him. You could see me. If I didn't have the mic, I could use the webcam mic. It's got dual speakers in it. It's got built-in mic in it. I could use that. I didn't have to buy that thing for two dollars and fifty cents. But you know what? It works. It does the job. I buy in necessity, folks. The only reason why, like I said, I bought that computer because the other one messed up on me. It, got, it must have got a virus or something. Got messed up on it. And uh, I had to buy another one, or else otherwise I would have kept that computer from now till doomsday. But anyway, I'm not going to keep talking about stuff like this here. Um, I know what I have to do. Uh, it's it's going to take a lot of work to do it because uh, I still have to work on my template. Like I said, I got to do that over, um, and then and then work it. I got then I got to embed. Then I had to go do all of these listings with the new template. That's going to take time, and uh, you know it is what it is, folks. It is what it is. But anyway, um, that's all I can tell you right now. It's a three, and, and that's the other thing too. With this being in this business, I never seen, and I don't know if there's any full time other full time sellers out there. I never seen the morning, the afternoons, and the evenings fly by. I never seen time go so fast before. When I was on my job. It would take the week would take a it would take like it feel like eternity to get out of there. You know, when you're working nine to five jobs, like oh my gosh, it's it's only twelve o'clock. I got five more hours left to work. It's like holy smoke! I never seen time fly. I get up at seven o'clock this morning, six thirty, seven o'clock. First thing I do is go this. 
Turn on a fifth of coffee, get a, co a cup of coffee. Now I'm looking, I just had lunch before at 12. Now I'm looking, it's three o'clock. Now we're working towards dinner. I never see it. All I'm saying, folks, is what really cracks me with this business. I never seen time fly. I know they say time flies when you have fun. <laughs> well, it, it's not a question so much having fun. It's a question to get things done and there's not enough hours in a day to do it. There's no way I'm going to be able to create a template today and get all 256 listings with a new template because that takes time because you got to revise it, take it out, then you got to put in the new stuff, you got to copy and paste the old stuff in there. It's time consuming. It is time consuming. So that's what I'm trying to say. And that's the other thing. That's the only reason why I'm, I'm talking about this, about when to use Buy It Now and, and uh, Best Offers. When you're doing your listings, just make sure you know what you're using to buy it now for on best offers because you don't want to get snowballed into bad. And let me tell you something, even on, like I said again once before, even on the higher price things, you're going to still get low ball offers. I see it on my Facebook group. Um, people, I have people telling me, oh, I got a low ball offer. I, you know, they ask them, what, you, what would you do to that? You know what I tell them? If it's that low, just decline it. Don't even waste your time. But that's all I'm trying to bring out to you folks. And when you do a template for this business, uh, I know some of the sellers, they don't have any fancy templates. Uh, I'm just doing it because I like to go that extra mile. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it's just like when I said I put the holiday calendar in there. I don't think a lot of other sellers do that there. I'm not saying it makes me special or better. I just like to go the extra mile. So however you set it up, uh, again, this is for the newbies. Um, you know, just make sure you do your homework with it. Uh, and when you go sourcing, and you pick something at the thrift store, and it's a half, you know, 50% off days. Uh, if you, you know, got them around your, I'm sure you got them around your areas too. Uh, do you keep, keep that cell phone next to you and uh, get that eBay app and just look the items up. And uh, you let me know if you got the choice, if you, if you don't mind, if you have the chance, the choice, the chance. And uh, let me know what you think about that, folks. Let me know if you agree with me on that about. Thrift stores charging the same amount of money as being the same for the same price that's being sold on eBay. Let me know. I I think I had a discussion once before, but if you want to feedback it or just leave it in the comments, say, hey, yeah, I've, I've gone through the same thing. I know what you're talking about. Yes, they do. They do charge the same price. You know, thrift stores are charging the same the same amount of money that's being sold on eBay. I like to hear them. I, I threw it out there once before, but I don't know if anyone really commented. I think one person did, but I'm talking about like, you know, other, you know, I like to see other comments, other feedback, what people have to say about that. It's uh, it just has me going, you know. But anyway, guys, I will talk to you soon in the next video. Um, I might be doing uh, I don't know. I got to see if I got any eBay auction alerts like that. I may be doing another reseller news thing. I don't know yet. I got to see because I'm getting them. All, I get them all day long, and there's just too much stuff out there. So I don't know if I'm going to do it. Definitely, I'm going to see if it's something that's really I feel it's imperative that you guys you know should want. I want to share with you. Is, I'll put it out there. Thanks again, guys. Listen, I hope I wish everybody has a good sales today. Uh, it's it's Monday over here in the East Coast in New York. Dreary, gloomy day out. Um, I guess this is kind of a, a good day to, um, you know, update your listings or do what you have to do on it. Right now, it's very quiet for me. Um, I saw that one little stupid <laughs> offer for a buck twenty-five. Could you imagine that? You know, when you when you're working in the corporate world. You make it. You used to make an extra amount of money, and someone told you, "Hey, how'd you do today? What'd you do?" And if I took the offer, I made I made a, a buck twenty-five today. <whistles> Last of the big time spenders, and it wouldn't even come out to a buck twenty-five. It'd be a loss. But could you imagine that though? You know, you, when you're so used to an income coming in, I'm joking around about this here, but down deep inside, you know, it 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 kind of reflects what you had. And now what you lost, it kind of reflects on it, and, and, and it kind of leaves like a bad taste in your mouth, so to speak. You know, to sit there and tell people, "Hey, what'd you make today? I made two dollars, or I made thirty dollars." Mine would have been not even a dollar twenty-five. My day would have been zero. <laughs> you know, one last thing in closing: if you're going to go into this business, folks. If you could do it, have all your bills paid. If your mortgage is paid, that's even better yet. If your car's paid, that's 10 times good between a mortgage and a car. And if you have any credit cards, my suggestion, keep one and get rid of all the rest. Take it from somebody who's been there. I've been there already. 
and uh, not a pretty picture folks today I went through that scenario today I got one nice little credit card that's it one that's all I need one okay and uh, thank God I was, my car is paid for it was it's an older car I bought it brand new but it's older now I mean you know it's paid for I have to worry about a car payment which was cost me enough money too and uh, thank God the house has been paid off so you know that's that's those are those are things that help out in that respect but uh, you don't want to have credit card bills you don't want to go into this business with a lot of debt believe me it's not if you're gonna do anything like that may, and make sure you have enough money to keep you going for slow days like today uh, people say well the day's still young you can get you can get sales at night 10 o'clock 11 o'clock 12 o'clock. I don't stay up well I'm not I'm not a I'm not a robot I don't stay up 24 7 okay um, I will probably be on this computer from now till midnight at times but I do break for lunch I do break for dinner and breakfast you know but it's it's not even you know what for me uh, it's not even a normal situation because you get up in the morning you have your cup of coffee first thing that goes on is this computer that's the first thing then you have your cup of coffee then at the end your cup of coffee you're checking out your list and see if you got anything going on with eBay you have your breakfast you're not wolf it down but you have your breakfast where we used to take maybe a nice casual breakfast 15 20 minutes maybe half hour to relax have a second cup of coffee not like that after you eat you come back here again then you stay here you watch the clock spin around like a top next thing it's like eight o'clock nine o'clock ten next thing it's noon time now it's lunch now you're breaking for lunch so you eat your sandwich whatever it is whatever you're having after you eat it you don't take an hour break I don't at least I don't maybe you guys might take an hour or whatever you take after you eat your, your lunch come back to the computer oh let's see what we got to do now we got to do this now then the clock ticks again yeah now the clock's going off what 315 already and then you watch the clock I hear that grandfather clock going off every hour quarter <laughs> every, every it's ridiculous and I'm sitting here on a computer work and I was like oh my god the clock is going off again like I like that clock is gonna be my worst enemy you know it's like stop ticking already you know and but it's true and then after dinner time you might break to watch the uh, I, I usually watch the nightly business report and uh, PBS news hour because those those shows I like because one talks about the business and the PBS news hour has no commercials it's a, it's one of those uh, public television station newses but very informative PBS and uh, then next thing you know, you're up. After that's done, 12 o'clock midnight, okay, shop closed, you go to sleep, you do the same thing all over again. I never, ever in all my life has seen mornings, days, nights, and weeks, and months, and, year, and, a, and, a, and a year fly by like this. I never did. Not, and, and all the times I was working, I never seen anything like it before. Um, it's 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 amazing how fast time flies um, I'm gonna take a little break and I mean a little break um, have my second cup of coffee and then uh, I'll be back here again to do my uh, my work and start working on my templates and check and see if I got anything if they on the other listings have to be updated maybe do some price droppings you know see if I could do some price drops on this I don't know uh, but that's it but all I'm saying folks you get involved with this here try to keep your bills minimal Put some money away for a rainy day, like today is a rainy day, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I hope, I wish you all, I wish you all the best. And for all the sellers out there that are making a nice living off of this year, kudos to you. Wish you guys all the best, men and women who are doing this here full time, making a, a nice living out of it. I wish you all the best. I wish myself all the best. Um, I know I'm still new at it. You know, like I said, even as I said, well, yeah, you're not that new. No, a year is not really. Not when, you not when you're dealing with seasoned uh, eBay sellers out there. I'm, when I say seasoned seller, I'm talking about people have been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years. Okay, those are the seasoned ones. Those are the ones that have been around. You know, they build up a brand name. They have repeat buyers. And I think I have a couple of repeat buyers on my, that that deal with me, which I'm happy for too. I really am happy that I have the repeat buyers. Um, you know, but they have a brand name. You know, they built it. They establish a name, a reputation on there on eBay. That's why it was very important for me that time when I did have that negative to get it removed okay that negative really bothered me folks it really irked me to no end so that's why I went through I reached out to the buyer and thank God the buyer was a nice enough person to reconsider and retract that negative because it really really bothered me it really did but anyway 
Uh, I don't know, how, this one doesn't have a counter on it, but I'm sure this video is a lot longer than expected. I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you like what I do with these videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel. If you get anything out of them, you think the knowledge or, or the, the information I'm passing on to you is helpful in any way, uh, give it a thumbs up if you like. If not, that's fine. Uh, at least if you just check it out, if you stop by just to listen to the video, check it out for yourself, at least you get a little insight on things. And um, again, you know, if you like what I do and you want to be updated every time I post a video, uh, you'll be, you know, you'll get a notification uh, whether you want to watch it or not. That's totally up to you. Um, you know, like I said, it's not all strictly. Um, I mean, like I said, I do cover eBay, a lot of eBay stuff. Like I said, I do the seller, I do the uh, sneak peeks, the demos and intro videos. Uh, I don't know if that becomes too boring for people or if it's too much. And if you don't, if you don't subscribe for that reason, I would understand. But um, I do to see other folks th those videos. I do for you guys, potential eBay buyers, and uh, I, I hope it gives you a little insight and help. And, and it kind of like to me, I feel that it helps out, you know, in regards to for you to make a buying decision as whether you want the item or not. Um, I, I do put a lot of time into those videos to make it. You know, like I said, embedding and. You know, it, it's a lot of work. I mean, to me, it takes a lot. It takes quite some time to do it. I mean, you know, it seems like I'm doing videos on the fly, but you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But anyway, guys, talk to you soon. Take care. I wish you all the best and uh, good, happy selling today. I hope we can make some money today. Talk to you soon. Bye bye now.